Um, all right, so last class we learned about we learned about uh, the more volume techniques, in particular um, volume by cross sections and volume by shells. Let's go over that homework, and then we're going to take like a quiz today too. Is the other thing we're going to do. Um, so uh, Griffin, there is some homework. Let's do. I think this is the class where like I did a good job. We showed all the videos and stuff, right? A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's go over. The worksheet that was called Volume by Cross Section. Let's do that right now. What kind of vocabulary? What? Volume. 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 Do you have math Okay. Um, so good. Um, from this worksheet, um, so from this uh, cross section, um, cross sections worksheet, I thought we could do a couple of these. Um, I don't know which one should we do. Like. Seven, nine, something. Do you have, some, do you have recommendations? Four. Seven, nine, four. Is that maybe good enough? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so number four said, um, the solid lies between planes perpendicular to the x-axis at x equals negative one and x equals one. Okay, so for starters, um, the language here is kind of important. Here's negative one, and here is one. And what they are telling me is uh, that the solid lies between uh, x equals negative one and x equals one. So whatever solid is going to be formed is going to be somewhere in between here and here. Um, OK. Uh, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are circular disks. Uh, OK, I feel like I can handle that. Uh, whose diameters run from the parabola y equals x squared to the parabola y equals 2 minus x squared. All right, so I'm going to so I'm going to graph um, y equals x squared, which looks like this, and then I'll graph y equals um, 2 minus x squared, which looks like this, and they intersect at like 1 and negative 1. I don't even need like algebra for that. Um, and so the uh, region enclosed by these two parabolas is this region. So in the language that I used uh, in class on um, whatever day that was, month Tuesday, um, this is like the real estate. The real estate purchase is the one in between the parabolas. And here's what they say, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. In other words, the circles are going to be formed by you know, taking these kind of like cross sections. Um, and so if I make a representative rectangle at a particular distance, uh, at a particular distance x, um, what is, how, how does that rectangle um, influence the circle formed? Or like, it's kind of a vague question, but like, that's like the diameter basically, right? Um, okay. And so does everyone see? Also, there's a picture on the paper, which is pretty good, that this rectangle is just going to get revolved. It's just going to get. It's not really getting revolved, actually. I take it back. It's getting sort of like you're just building up and down out of the board and down into the board a um, circle with that as your diameter. Okay, so if you want to actually do this problem, since this is symmetric, I suppose we could just do it um, from zero to one, and then just multiply by two. And what is it that I'm adding up? I'm adding up a bunch of, yes? Do you have any extras in these worksheets? I do. I have one in my hand right now. One second, let me finish the problem. Um, so, uh, so what we need to do is um, take that length, and okay, so this is y equals 2 minus x squared, and this is y equals x squared, then you have to figure out what the length of that rectangle is, what is the length of that rectangle? Um, 2 minus x squared. Yeah, this is like 2 minus x squared minus another x squared. So it's uh, 2 minus x squared. Two minus x squared. Yeah, true. 
Um, okay, so we take that length, that 2 minus 2x squared length, and what do we do with it? First divide by 2, because that's the diameter, so divide by 2 to get the radius, and then square it. Multiply by pi, that gives the area of the circle, and then if its thickness is some small amount. And now I just pretty much like do this integral cool. Okay, so I guess I can do it. Um, how do I do this? Uh, the 2 goes away, and it's like squared. And it's like, so I think it's like 2 pi integral from 0 to 1 of um, uh, skipping some steps here x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. I feel like that's right. Um, good. Um, so this is 2 pi uh, x to the fifth over 5 minus 2 thirds x cubed plus x, um, and then at 1 and 0. So I get, final answer, it's 2 pi, it's a fifth minus 2 thirds plus 1, so whatever that is. 15 minus 10, 5, 3, 8, 15, 16, 16 pi over 5, 16 pi over 15 I mean. Wait, did I do that right? <clears throat> Wait, did I? Is that what you guys got? So, yeah. Hold on, I think I messed up. Uh, 15 minus 10, 5 plus 3, 8. Yeah, I think it's right. Is that what you got? All right. Answer 16 pi over 15. Um, so number seven, is this, is this fairly intuitive? I guess it's like kind of like not so hard, right? All right, sometimes it's just like you have to get the picture right from the language given. Number seven says, the base of a solid is the region between the curve y equals two root sine x. So what does two root sine x look like? Well, sine is gonna have, sine's gonna look like that. So root sine, actually, if you wanna be like careful about this, the normal sine kind of goes like jump, jump. Um, this sign is also going to do that, but it's going to do it with like a little, um, when you take the square root of something between 0 and 1, it gets like bigger, right? So this is going to look a little more, it's look a little more like locally square rootish or something. It'll look like a kind of like fat sine curve, and then also stretched out by 2. But whatever, that doesn't really matter uh, so much. That is the real estate which I purchased. What am I doing with this real estate? I'm constructing, uh, okay, so now it says, the base of the solid is the region between the curve uh, and the interval 0 pi. So it's like, <coughs> zoom, zoom. Uh, and cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are first equilateral triangles and then next um, squares. So uh, basically, you're making equilateral triangles out of this. Uh, so here is an arbitrary x value. Um, and then basically, I take um, uh, this length, which is root, or just two root sine x. And if I want to make an equilateral triangle out of that, then I just know this formula for this for the area of an equilateral triangle with side length x, it's x squared root 3 over 4, we did that last class. So this is going to be that squared uh, root 3 over 4, and I'm just going to take an integral from 0 to pi. Cool? And then actually doing it is pretty easy, I think, because it's like the 4s cancel, so it's just like root 3 times over the integral from 0 to pi of sine x is, and we just like know that one by heart. What is that? Or I do. What's the area under one hump of sine? That's just like two. So I got two root three for part A. Cool. All right. I thought nine was the one that was like a little bit hard. Nine said the solid lies between planes perpendicular to the y-axis of y equals zero and y equals two. The cross sections perpendicular uh, to the y-axis are circular disks with diameters running from the y-axis to the parabola x equals root 5 over y squared. Okay, yikes. Um, all right, so first of all, x equals root, x equals, uh, root 5 y squared is being discussed. So let's get a graph of that. That's going to be a sideways uh, parabola. So that's something I know. So here's my sideways parabola. Um, what else does it say? It says the solid lies between planes perpendicular to the y-axis at y equals 0 and y equals 2. 
Okay, so this is perpendicular to the y-axis at y equals zero. This is perpendicular to the y-axis at y equals two. And so it's got to be it's got to be like contained between those. So I claim this is like irrelevant. And I guess um, when when is that two? Um, that's two. Uh, at, wait, hold on. When y is two, x is like four root five, which is like root eighty, which is like nine more or less. Okay. So um, the solid lies between planes perpendicular to the y-axis at y equals zero and y equals two. Cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis are circular discs. Okay. So now it's when I take cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. That's how I'm getting my circle. Right? So. Um, in other words, um, uh, and note that they didn't provide you the picture here, so this means you had to actually like read the words carefully. It means that that is the region that we're discussing, and the circular disks are going to have diameters um, of like this length. Is this you guys all figured out? Okay, cool. So what I do now is I take an arbitrary y value and. For that arbitrary y value, the length of that red thing is root 5 y squared. And now I'm not, not rotating it, I'm just building circles um, which have that as, my, as, as the diameter. Um, and so, um, well, for an arbitrary y value in between 0 and 2, I take that root 5 y squared quantity, what do I do with it? First divide by 2, because as the diameter now I have the radius squared, pi, that's now the area of the circle, dy, integrate from 0 to 2. Cool. All right, so whatever that turns out to be, I don't feel like doing it. Is that all right? Can we move on? All right, good. All right, then there was a bunch of homework on shells uh, from the book. Nick Healy, how'd that go? Pretty well. Pretty well, he says. Um, let's do some of the problems. Let's do, like, at least one easy one in the x direction, one in the y direction, and then maybe we'll do some of the trickier ones. Yeah, and some of them are like really cool, like 52. Uh, so 52 is like pretty cool. 59 was like kind of cool. Uh, there was another. Why is that 63? Oh, from the other, the other page. Yeah, maybe we can do that. Um, so wait. Uh, did I sign? Um, did I sign 22, 21, 23, 21? 23, 21. I did. And how about? Did I sign 27? Sorry, 23. I did or didn't? I said 27C. Oh, 27. Oh, 27. oh, 27. 27. oh, 27. Oh, 27. Yeah. So 27C. Um, and then, what were the other cool ones? Did you guys get this chorus problem? 44? Yeah. Which one? All right, and then let's do like let's do like one more. Or not? Is that pretty much good? Yeah. What's the answer for twenty six? Oh, twenty and twenty six is a um, one of my other classes said twenty six is a talk about your feelings problem because you don't actually have to do it. You just have to uh, like say what you would do. Yeah. I get that Yeah. There it is. No. Okay. Um, 44. All right, Richard, let's do this. Um, so, 23. Um, so, I'm going to go really fast. If you're like totally bored, you're like, yeah, I got this homework. Just like work in a review pack or something. You look bored. Okay. All right. 23. 23 says take the curve. Um, let's go fast. Y equals 4x minus x squared. Um, and y equals zero, and we're rotating about the line x equals five. Um, okay, how do we do this? 
Um, because you're keeping up the camera and everything, right? Yes, good. Um, so, um, we have y equals 4x minus x squared, so it's boom, 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 boom. And that is going to peak at 2, 4. Right. Um, what am I doing with this region? I'm taking the region enclosed by 4x minus x squared and y equals 0. That's this one. And I'm going to do something with it. And the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, <coughs> rotate it about the line x equals 5. OK? Pretty happy about that. Um, well, uh, it seems like I should use shells here, so I will. So I'll draw a representative rectangle, key step. And now I need to know what happens when that moves around. And the answer is I make a shell. And what are the dimensions of the shell? Well, if this is an arbitrarily chosen x value between 0 and 4, then the dimensions of the shell, I need to know both the radius of the shell and the height of the shell. The height of the shell is just 4x minus x squared, and the radius of the shell is, in this case, 5 minus x. Good. Um, and then that's pretty much it. If I can find the volume of one shell, then I can find the volume of um, the entire figure. So the volume of one shell is going to be uh, 2 pi r, which is 5 minus x, uh, h, which is 4x minus x squared, dx. And now I just integrate from 0 to 4. Oh, can I skip the integral? I'm just like assuming you guys know how to do integrals. OK, good. Uh, that way we can do more problems. So 27c um, says, uh, take the following. Take the curve y equals x cubed uh, and y equals 0 and x equals 2. So the region enclosed by those curves. And now what they want you to do is they want you to rotate around the line x equals 4. Wait, this is the same problem, basically. Isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, wait, I want to do one where you have to go y style. Why would I want to do that? Um, okay, uh, let's. Number 17. Yeah. Let's not go over it. 17. 17, you have to do it? Yeah. Yeah, but 17 is kind of easy. It's kind of like too easy. Oh, whatever. Okay, um, so 17 was y equals x cubed, x equals 0, y equals 8, and it wants you to go. Whoa, chill. Chill. Um, so if we graph uh, y equals x cubed, x equals 0, and y equals 8, then I'm going to get something like this. So this is y equals x cubed, and this is my region. And uh, it says I want to go around the x-axis, right? Is that what it says? Yeah. yeah. So we want to um, rotate about the x-axis. Well, I could do this with washers, but I also could do it with shells because they told me to do it with shells. So if I do it with shells, then I'm going to draw my representative rectangle sideways parallel to the axis of rotation, and then um, I'm going to choose an arbitrary uh, y value, and yes, this is y equals x cubed, but what's more relevant for me is that this curve is x equals cubed y. Um, and now, uh, thus, when I do this, I get a kind of horizontal shell, which looks something like this. And I need to know both the radius of the shell and the height of the shell. Well, for a given y value, the height of the shell will be cube root y, and the radius of the shell is just y. So the integral is going to be uh, 2 pi r is just y, h is cube root y. Um, and now dy, and then integrate from 0 to 8. That's kind of OK, right? Um, well, we good? OK. Um, so wait, let's do 26, because that kind of fits into this same uh, category of like how would you do it. It's just that you don't have to, have to actually do it to figure out how you would do it. Y, minus, y equals 4 minus e to the x. Oh, I'm remembering something now, which is Oh well, whatever, we'll see. Y equals 4 minus e to the x. Okay, what does this look like? Um, it's the 
<coughs> g to the x one, so this one negative, so it's e to the negative, moved up four. So I guess it would have been a negative one, so now this is going to be at three, and it's going to intersect somewhere here. So it says, uh, decide whether it is more convenient to use the disk method or the shell method to find the volume of the solid of revolution. Explain your reasoning, do not find the volume. All right, so this is my uh, region, and this is my curve, <coughs> y equals 4 minus e to the x, and I'm rotating it about the y-axis. All right, what should we do? Shells or washers? Who has an opinion? Lathra. Um, I think we should use disk because the inverse of that function can easily be found. Okay, what is the inverse of this function? I guess it would x be... x equals natural log of 4 minus y. x equals ln 4 minus y. Let's see, did you do that right? I guess you did. Um, so, looking good. Alright, so if that's that, then you want to use disks, you're saying, right? Yeah, so if you use disks, which does seem kind of reasonable, that means we're going to draw the rectangles sideways, and we're going to choose an arbitrary y value. And then, here's the interval. So we're doing um, disk, right? Yeah. We don't have to do the interval. I know. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> this is going to be, uh, so this is going to be, um, this is going to be pi radius squared. So I'm going to take like, oh, I'm starting to get unhappy though about this. Um, and then dy. That's the, that's the volume of one disk, right? And now I'm going to integrate up the y-axis from 0 to 3. All right, that's perfectly fine, except I don't know how to do that interval. So yeah, if I'm, using, if I'm going to use my calculator, then I'm happy. If I'm going to have to do it by hand, I'm like not so happy because I don't know how to do that. Anymore. Um, how can we do it if we're going to use the summer? I'm going to go and I'm going to practicing like hundreds of smiley faces next year. It's going to be all possible human emotions. I'm just going to be like on it for every problem. It's really fun. All right. Um, what, um, Sherry Fan? What if I do it with shells? Is that possible? Yeah. Does anyone do it with shells? If you do it with shells, I think it ends up being an interval that you can do, maybe, or maybe not. Uh, so if this is if this is x, then if you do it with shells, it's going to be uh, two pi x, and the height is four minus e to the x. Uh, I think I don't know how to do that either, right? This is the integral from zero to whatever the hell that is. What is that? Um, ln four. You guys know how to do this integral? Actually, I do. You don't. All right. Um. <laughs> Neither of them are good. Okay, good. Um. Okay. Uh, so good. All right, I think that's all. There. This is a dumb problem I decided. Okay. Um. Couple more. The answer is they're both fine, I guess. I don't know. It was just talk about your feelings. There's no right answer. Remember what are your feelings? What is the right answer for number 25? Yeah. For number what? For number 25, which is the same type of question. That was the correct answer for us. Can I go like, check that? Yeah, you can go check in the big binder. I think it's just going to say they're both fine, but this is a hard integral. This is a doable integral. But I think you guys don't know how to do this integral yet either. So I don't know. I do that. Okay. Um, let's get to the hard, fun problems. Um, I don't think we have time for all of them. Let's just do some of them. Twenty of those, forty-four, fifty-two, fifty-nine. Which ones are essential? Fifty-two is hard. Yeah, fifty-two. Fifty-two. Should we do fifty-two and fifty-nine, or fifty-two and fifty-four? Fifty-nine. Or fifty-two and forty-four. Are you 44? Yeah, 44. Yeah, 44. 44? Uh, 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 okay, let's do 52 first, and then we'll see what we feel like. Alright, uh, so 52, very exciting problem. 52 says, find the volume of an ellipsoid. And specifically it says, take x over a squared plus y over b squared equals 1. And um, that's an ellipse. And then rotate it. Specifically, it says rotate it about 
The y-axis. Okay. Shell. So, what's yeah, that? Number 26 is shell. They just say shells? Uh, yeah. No explanation? Uh, there's like a tiny explanation, You're but it's just like... supposed to talk about your feelings. What does Forrester say? What? Or no, who, wrote, who wrote this book? Read the explanation. Larson. What does Larson say? The shell method is easier, and then it has that integral for the shell method, and then it has using the disk method, and it has the one for the disk method. That's it. And it has that. It doesn't actually. Yeah. 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 I think that first integral is like impossible. That second integral is doable, but I think you don't know how to do it yet, right? You guys don't know how to interpret x e to the x. Didn't. Nope. Wasn't there some problem where you were you said differentiate to prove that the integral of something equals x to the x, and then we use that in the second Oh, so you just like came up in some obscure corner of some previous homework? Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I have, no, I have no opinion. Not a science problem. All right. Good. Um, so we have an ellipse. OK, this is exciting because I'm just, just teaching about ellipses today in functions, or last week. Well, um, so I am choosing to draw my ellipse horizontally such that because um, I guess that's what we do, right? Like A is bigger than B, you know, blah, blah. So um, we did this for like about five seconds in pre-calc C. Um, Brittany, what happens if you take this ellipse and you rotate it about its major axis? There's no, who cares what the name is? Just describe it in your own human words. Okay, it looks kind of like an Easter egg. Anybody else? Like a football, kind of like a rugby ball. It's a prolate spheroid. Prolate spheroid, yes, very descriptive. Yeah, you get, you get that one, right? You get that one that's kind of just like a potato. Basically, it looks like a, looks like a potato, egg, football, pretty much. Okay, on the other hand, Yoni, what if instead you rotate this about the y-axis? What shape is formed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> same thing but smushed and turned. You can say that about all shapes. Yeah, Earth. same thing but smushed. Um, <laughs> um, oh, wait, ninth grader, go to like that. Can the ninth grader have a piece of cake? Jackson, cut a small piece of cake for yourself. Yeah, don't say I never did anything for you. All right. Um, good. Just like. Yep, pick it up just pick it up with your hands. Oh All right, yes. Okay, good. So if we, um, anyway, wait, we're screwing around too much. Um, if we rotate this by the y-axis, we get like a oblate spheroid. Oblate spheroid. Yes, true. It's like a, it looks kind of like a, um, like a cheese wheel, like a mento. It looks kind of like a mento. It looks kind of like a um, curling, curling uh, stone. Yes. It does. Okay, good. Uh, so, as we are rotating about the y-axis, which shape am I getting? The potato or the mento? Getting the mento, right? Okay, good. All right. Somebody, this is a deep question, please explain to me in a just completely intuitive, obvious way that doesn't use any capitals at all, but just uses the principle of duh, why the volume of this Ellipsoid is what you think it is. <laughs> Can you be more specific? What do you mean? Yeah. 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 It's like how the volume, like the area of an ellipse is like a stretched out circle by factors of A and D. Uh -huh. You're the same, like, that's like a stretched out sphere by factors of A and B. So you can just yeah, so what's the, what's the answer? The volume of this thing? Uh, four spheres. I, um, A squared B. A squared B? Explain. Um, so you, it's like you have, because this is a deep moment. Yeah, so like, with, with the sphere, it's like you have three radiuses of um, length r, so you just have r cubed. Here you have two radii of length a and one radius of length b, and you multiply them all together and multiply by four this time. Yeah, take a take a take a sphere of radius one. If the sphere is of radius one, what's its volume? Four yeah, it's going to be like, you know, 4 thirds pi, whatever, r cubed, but r is just 1. Okay, good. 
So Brittany, a deep way to think about this is split the sphere of radius 5. OK, yeah, I can just plug 5 into the, into the sphere formula. But really, there's just one sphere. And they've just all been smushed, as the ninth grader said. Um, so if there's just one sphere, and I want to make it uh, everything bigger by a factor of 5, you can sort of think of me as what I'm really doing when I'm changing the sphere to have a radius of 5. So I'm stretching it in the x direction. I'm stretching in the y direction. And I'm also stretching it in the z direction, each by factor 5. Right? Which is why I multiplied this by 5 by 5 by 5. What's going on over here, says Yoni, is, well, as this is coming out of the board like this, I'm basically, what I'm really doing is I'm stretching it out by A in the X direction. I'm stretching it out by A in the Y direction. And I'm stretching it out by B in the Z direction. And so the answer just should be this. Cool? People usually think this is really cool. I don't know what you guys think. All right. Um, so, cool. Um, can we actually prove that it really is the thing that we think it is? Yeah. Can we do it? Yeah, of course we can do it. Um, so how do we do it? Now is the time for a little bit of math. I'll take just the top half and then multiply by 2, because that's what people do. And then I'll also take that. And I'm just going to basically, therefore, focus on the green region only. And I am going to rotate about the y-axis. So I'm going to use shells, because why not? Um, and so there is my shell. And that is what the shell looks like. So given an arbitrary x value, um, the radius of that shell is going to be x. And the height of that shell uh, is, well, OK, I have to do a little bit of like algebra here um, and solve for y. So I get y squared over b squared equals, uh, let's see, um, a squared, yeah, a squared minus x squared over a squared? Yes. So I get that y is b over a root a squared minus x squared. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shell, <coughs> excuse me, which has volume 2 pi r is x and h is b over a root a squared minus x squared dr. Uh, and then I'm just going to add them all up from 0 to A, and multiply by 2. Cool. Uh, all right, now it's just a matter of doing this weird integral, which I feel like we can do. Um, if I take all the constants out, this becomes 4 pi B over A, integral from 0 to A of x root A squared minus x squared. How do I do this integral? U sub, U sub. U sub, yes, absolutely. So <coughs> off to the side, I'm going to let U be A squared minus X squared. Don't forget all this crap. And let DU, then DU is negative 2X DX. So I need to stick in a negative 2, and I need to undo the damage um, with a negative 1 half on the outside. Um, when I do that, I'm going to get uh, two negative 2 pi b over a integral from, you have to change the limits. So u of 0 is a squared, and u of a is 0. 